you want to like face a hitter, like an elite hitter, what is the main thing you do to prepare for that? Like main uh, stat you look at or yep. whatever it is. Yep. So there's a lot of things you can, a lot of different ways you can parse it. It depends on what information I have available to me, um, how much history I have against that hitter, um, and how much data I have, you know, heat maps and stuff like this, and what they're based on. What you find is with the really elite hitters, um, we don't have enough data right now to really create a good game plan against them. A guy like Juan Soto, for instance. Um, he doesn't chase. He has a very, he's an extremely low out of zone chase rate. And he hits everything in the zone uh, in every count. <laughs> now, so, so it, and it doesn't really matter how you look at the data, like that's kind of what it says. So it, it puts you in a position where you're like, well, man, I don't, you know, what do I do? At the end of the day, what you kind of default back to is, all right, well, I'm just going to mix up pitches and throw them kind of in a random order and hopefully keep him off the set. Like, I'm going to try to get him out by front hipping him with a two seam the first at bat, and then I'm going to try to throw a backdoor slider to get him out the second at bat, or something like that. That's where the hitter, backing out a hitter's approach and working on count specific data um, would be really helpful, is to break down elite hitters like that. Uh, some hitters, let's see here. If you look at this, like this, uh, I guess the fourth column from the, whatever the pink column, sliders. It's pretty. It's pretty obvious that in the bottom two rows, like if you just throw it kind of down below the zone, there, it's it's a really good pitch. Uh, don't throw it middle. Throw it below the zone. He's going to chase a decent amount. Um, there's certain hitters like that, uh, or this uh, in the case of uh, changeups. So the Second column from the right, uh, second picture down. If you just get a change up kind of outer half, uh, it's probably pretty good. Um, but I don't remember exactly which hitter this was against, so it may be an elite hitter, it may not be. Uh, so it, it really just depends on, on what data you have available. But uh, I'd like to see something kind of like this, a heat map of what he does in certain counts, that if, I, if I had a choice, uh, preferably based on the, the run values um, in that count specific, game specific situation. Elite hitters, you try to reduce the damage, right? So if bases are loaded, hopefully you keep it in the park. Yeah, I had a, I had a, Miguel Cabrera in his prime is a great example. I, had, I faced him a lot. I was in Cleveland, he's in Detroit. We play each other 19 times a year. And um, we had some really interesting at bats. He, he, he will not, his approach is very, very good. And he absolutely will not come off of his approach unless he chooses to sit on a specific pitch, and then he usually hits it out. <laughs> so his, his approach, though, is he'll give you basically anything in the up and in quadrant, any fastball in the up and in quadrant. But he's a good enough hitter that in two strikes, he can just pull his hands in and foul it off. And so you'd get to two strikes, and I'd know that, so I'd throw him fastballs up and in, and he'd just foul it off, and he'd look at me like, OK, can't beat me there. So I'd say, OK, I'm going to do it again. And he'd take the exact same swing. And there'd be three or four foul balls that went in the exact same area. And he'd just be looking at me like, I can do this all day. <laughs> like, you going to try something else? Right? And then at some point on the mound, you're like, shoot, well, I, I don't want to waste a bunch of pitches. I mean, let me try something else. And then you throw him off speed away or something else. And it's right into his approach. And he smacks it. Right? And so these elite hitters are very difficult to deal with. But there's definitely ways you can break them down. Um, also, great story about Miguel Cabrera. My good friend Mike Clevenger is pitching against him. And Miguel Cabrera is standing in the, on, in the on deck circle. And he looks at our dugout and he goes, second pitch, change up, homer to right center. <laughs> what? I, hope he's, I hope he's kidding. He walks up to the plate, first pitch fastball, ball. Right? And kind of steps out, kind of like looks at our dugout and smiles a little bit, gets back in there. And then it's, you know, Clevenger's like, I'm going to kind of be tricky. I'm going to get him with a 1 0 changeup. I don't ever throw that pitch. There's no way he's looking for it, whatever. And he hits it out to left center. And he's like kind of rounding third base. And he looks at our dugout and he goes, I missed it a little bit. Right? But these are, these are some things that elite hitters do and why no analytics that you ever have will be 100% foolproof because they just 
are really good sometimes, and, you know, human error or human greatness. And you, and you have guess hitters, too. A lot of major league hitters are guess hitters. Uh, what's, what's the guy from Twins, Rosario? Rosario? So Rosario, if he's sitting on a pitch, he'll swing at it no matter what. You can throw it right at him. It would hit him if he didn't hit it. But he'll sit there and he'll swing at it. He doesn't care. He's swinging. And you can throw him anything. You can throw it right at him. If he's sitting on that pitch, he's going to pull it about five zillion feet down the right field line because that's just, he's sitting there. Okay, anything coming in, I'm yanking it. And then you'll throw him three fastballs right down the middle and he'll swing and miss at all of them and be nowhere close. And you're like, this doesn't make any sense. But he's a really, he's a really good guess hitter and he, he, he'll pick on tendencies of the pitcher. And that's kind of his game plan. Um, so there's, that's why the, the, the hitter approach thing is so interesting because it should shed light on a lot of these questions that we just don't have answers for right now. Anybody else? You had one of the best defensive catchers in Cleveland, Roberto Perez. Yep. And should win the gold glove this year. And he's very good at pitch framing. How does something like that or his defensive abilities come into planning a game? Um, it, for me, it didn't come into planning a game at all. But it sure was nice in a 3-2 count when I tried to front hip a lefty and I missed by a couple inches and get the call, as opposed to being in bases loaded and having to face another hitter. Um, it, it's not something I ever tried to like, pitch to. I don't think any pitcher in the league is able to say, OK, I'm going to throw this ball two inches off the plate consistently and just consistently get that call. They may be able to do it a couple times, but they miss. And you know, it's, it's hard to go into a game like that. Then there may be some elite command artists that can do it, maybe a Kyle Hendricks or, or someone like that, right? But for me, it was more of a, I try to execute the pitch, and he cleans up some of my misses. And you don't ever see it, because you're like, oh, man, the umpire made a bad call. But you don't know that the next guy may have hit a grand slam, and the game would have been over uh, on the very next pitch. So it's one of those things that's hard to measure. And another thing that analytics can't, can't fully quantify that is definitely there or, or can't fully quantify yet, very similar to the sequencing of pitches. Um, we, I know there's something there. Uh, we just don't know exactly how to look at it yet to, to prove it. Scott, uh, we, do we have some more time, or do we need to call it off? I mean, maybe just like one more question. All right, one more question. Hopefully, if they limit me from doing something this time, they just name it after me. I've had this, <laughs> I've had this battle with them a couple different times, and they refuse to give me naming rights. Um, rule 755B, Bauer rule. Um, no, I don't know. We already have real-time data that comes in. Um, every pitch that I throw, you can see a plot come up of the velocity, the spin rate, the movement, the release point, the x, y, z. Right. So, if that data is made available to us and is OK to use. And how you parse that data is kind of up to you. Uh, I can't see them banning it. Um, I could be wrong, you know, but I, I don't foresee any issues, because we're not taking anything that everyone is, we're not taking, or everything we're using is something that everyone is getting. So that's just how you look at it. How you build a better mousetrap. Yep. So, Thank you very much. Yeah, we appreciate thanks, it. Guys. <laughs>